I'm never quite sure what to do with these builds. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. This is Boost My Build, the series where we take your PC build list, we tear them up, we put them back together, and we massively increase your performance. And man, we have two crazy builds for this episode. We've got a $900 music production and gaming PC, but they cannot find the level of production they need. Can we get them there for only $900? And we've got a $2,500, $2,500 Godzilla gaming PC that wants to play Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, and Warzone 2 and get tons of FPS, but oh my goodness, they have gotten bitten by the Lee and Lee virus. Can we save them? Remember, if you get value out of this video, give it a like, this makes a huge difference to the channel, and of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key, and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code, and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. All right, we've got hyphen track. Hyphen says, hi, Jason. This is a build for my brother. He's a music producer, big project, and his laptop isn't cutting it. He also does a little bit of gaming in like Apex Legends and Minecraft, but mostly music production focus, which is CPU intensive, definitely is. And this is also his first PC, obviously his first desktop PC, you said he had a laptop, maybe he's got a Mac, I don't know. The budget's 800 to 900 US dollars. He wants a full black case with only white LED lights. Hope you can boost this build. All right, let's see what you got. I, I, I just, I'm never quite sure what to do with these builds that are like almost got there, but kind of didn't really close the gap. It would function right now if you put this thing all together. You finished out at $769. Actually, there's no price being pulled in for your motherboard. It's the big Gigabyte B550UD. It's the full size ATX one. I think you can get them right now for about $100 over at Amazon. They maybe just be temporarily out of stock. So you basically finished kind of right up against your $900 price point. And I'm not quite seeing the level of performance I would like to see here. I, we're spending money in, in some weirder areas. And I just think, I think we could probably massage this build and get quite a bit more performance out of it. Let's start off with where else your GPU. I don't mind the RX 6650 XT, a gigabyte for $219. And you can generally find these cards for that price. I don't love grabbing a, an eight gigabyte card in 2023 with a $900 budget though. I just think that even though he's not primarily gaming with this, if he does want to play a game, especially new release titles, I just don't, eight gigabytes isn't enough for this price range. We could definitely grab a 12 gig VRAM RTX 3060 would be great, 6700 XT. Even the 10 gig 6700 would be pretty good. So I just, I don't love this choice. For the CPU, the Ryzen 5700X, look, it's a good CPU. I love its new price, $178, two thumbs up. It did get down to 169. And I would just keep my eye on this one because I know we're coming into Black Friday period. In fact, by the time this video goes live, it's probably gonna be time for some of those early Black Friday deals that start like at the end of October and in early November, they're often pretty good. So keep your eye on this one. The other one I would take a look at the uh, 12600K, really compelling CPU out there when it gets down to that $150, $160 price point like it did during the Amazon Prime Day. But right now, I do like this CPU, even though it's eight core 16 threads. I love a little bit more CPU power here, but this is pretty strong for our budget. I don't love the id cooling SE226 XC. You're like, Jason, you should recommend this cooler all the time. I did, but the problem is time has time has moved on and this cooler really has not adjusted with the times. The price on this cooler should have come down uh, substantially, at least, you know, five or $10. The other thing is you do not get a screwdriver that will fit in this, in this stupid hole here. So you have to buy a second screwdriver because they don't include one with the cooler, which I just did cool and come on, fix that. It's been years now. I don't recommend it anymore. There's other coolers out there for cheaper money. They're actually better. Gigabyte B550UD AC. Yeah, it is available right now at Am It says out of stock on these Amazon. Sometimes it does that even though it's in stock. It just means it's may not ship immediately. It might ship in like a week or something like that. This is a pretty good board if you need a ton of PCIe add-in cards. So for instance, if you do music production and you do a lot of audio capture, a lot of audio cards, 
in here, that might be a thing. Although I will say a lot of those devices these days tend to be external and they plug into the back of the motherboard right into the USB slots rather than be PCIe add-in cards. So unfortunately on this board, not tons of high speed. You know, Look, it's got four high speed ones. It's got four USB 2.0 ones. It's not terrible. We might do a little bit better. It does have Wi-Fi in it, like that a little bit because you also get the Bluetooth connectivity if it has Bluetooth headphones as well. Overall, pretty good board, but I would like to see upgraded audio on this board if he doesn't have his own external equipment. Nothing wrong with the RAM. DDR4, 3200CL16. We just need 32 gigs of it like you're getting here. You're going for the size of the RAM over the speed. No, nothing really wrong with that 3200CL16. Perfectly fine for what we're doing. And this is a great kit for only $51. The drive, Silicon Power A60. I don't know why this drive has actually come up in price a little bit since Amazon Prime Day in October. I, it, it just being a little expensive right now, I would look, if you want to spend a little bit more, I think four or $5, we can get a drive with actual DRAM on it, which might be useful for somebody who does a lot of moving of music files around, probably not as much for gamers, but again, music production, I would look for a DRAM drive, maybe just five or 10 bucks more. I really think we overspent on our, our case, despite the fact, despite the fact that the case itself has come down in price because it's only $89 right now at Amazon. That's an insanely good price. This is a very good case. I like a couple things about this case. The fan configuration on this case is pretty good. I absolutely love it. Good airflow, RGB. It's all kind of ready for you to go. You don't really have to move a whole lot around. I like the, the fan down here that's going to bring in some air into your GPU as well. So I do like the case. I do think we could spend a little bit less here and focus less on the aesthetics and get more performance. The PSU is absolutely fine, but it's just insanely expensive. I would go with a different unit instead, $114 right now. It's just this unit often sells a lot better in European markets than it does in the US. The pricing is much better. That's why I keep it on my best PSU list. But in the US, I would stay away from this one. There's other units we can pick out instead. We don't need 700 watts. That is quite a bit of power. So all told for what is $869.57, you came really close. This would be okay-ish, but I think we can do a lot better than okay-ish. I call this the $900 awesome music production and gaming build because you're going to get great levels of music production for $900 and it's going to game so much better, so much better. In fact, I finished at $903.81. I'm a little frustrated right now because it was $899 something dollars and I hit refresh and one of these components, maybe two, changed prices slightly and bumped me over the budget. Let's start off where else? Let's start off with the GPU. I went with the Sapphire Pulse RX 6700 XT. It's $329 with a $10 promo code, but there's like three of these models on sale at Newegg all around $319. So I'm really confident you can pick one up for $320. This is so much more performative than the GPU that you were looking at, the 6650 XT. Taking a look right now at the TechSpot RTX 4060 review. So this is relatively recent data here. 61 average FPS or 60 average FPS about for the 6650 XT. And look at the 6700 XT, 74 average FPS. Now this is in a large suite of very, very difficult to run games. If you turn on super easy to run titles, Valorant, League of Legends, other things like that. You're just gonna get tons and tons and tons of frames. At 1440p, high settings, high to ultra settings. And this is even with some titles with ray tracing turned on, which we all know AMD GPUs don't do the best at. And I would just say, don't turn on ray tracing for that. So this is gonna give you a lot more GPU power for all those games, and it's gonna give you 12 gigs of VRAM. For the CPU, I stuck it out with the Ryzen 7 5700X. I think you made the right call here. Eight cores, 16 threads. Again, I do like that i5-12600K. If it comes back to $154, I would snap that one up first. It's got more overall CPU processing power. But right now it's you know, 20, 30 bucks more expensive and it requires a considerably more cooling than the 5700X. So overall, you just got a lot more investment. That's why I like the 5700X. For the cooler, I actually kind of went as cheap as I could here. You can spend about $20 and just get a budget tower air cooler. Right now, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition, it's down to 20 bucks at Newegg. It's been here for about two weeks. I don't know why this cooler has been up in the 40s, maybe because it used to be the kind of the, the amazing awesome cooler, but listen, a lot of the coolers bypassed it in that $40 range. This one right now though, I would snap up for 20 bucks. For the motherboard, I decided to up up our performance here. I decided to go with a board that has ALC 1220 audio codec because it has additional audio encoding and decoding capabilities that those lower level audio codecs like the one on the board that you were looking at 
doesn't have. And I'm not sure if your brother has his own audio equipment that's gonna do the processing away from the audio section of the motherboard. If he does, go, go ahead and grab the board you wanted for $99, it will be just fine. But I decided to kind of up the game here just in case he's relying on that onboard audio processing. This has the ALC 1220. It's got a really nice looking audio section to it, uh, some nice shielding to it. Has similar levels of USB connectivity as the board you were looking at. $139, a really, really nice pickup here at Newegg. For the RAM, I like the RAM. I did try and get slightly faster RAM. It didn't really make any sense for the build. There's not really any reason to go much faster unless we could do it super cheap. We weren't able to and hit that budget. If you had $950, I probably would bump this up to 3600 CL16 RAM out there. Uh, you know, there's uh, there are some pretty good kits, more like $70 or $80. But honestly, let's just stick with this. This is good enough. For the drive, I swapped us out to the Team Group MP34. Two terabyte, it has DRAM on it. And that just makes a little bit of a difference when you're doing professional tests, you're not waiting for files to copy as long. It's just super, super nice. It can be nice even for like a gaming system, just no reason usually to throw money at that because it doesn't actually improve gaming performance. It's just once every so often when you're doing a brand new game install or you're moving a game that you might experience that. But this is something that people who deal with large files, doing video production, doing music production, kind of run into all the time. This is, and you don't want to be sitting there waiting for it. So I really do like this drive for $77 right now. For the case, listen, if you end up going with a cheaper motherboard, go ahead and go with the Montec Sky 2. It's a great PC case. But in the meantime, I needed to find a little bit more budget. I went with the Big Phoenix Nova Mesh. This is the full-size ATX case. Uh, I often recommend the Micro ATX one for, it's only like five bucks less. So this is a great case. Four included ARGB fans, it's all black. And you're like, Jason, he didn't want it, he wants all white. You can turn the fans all white. They're RGB, just turn them to the white RGB. And it's got that nice black matte finish to it. It's all mesh, it's got tons and tons of good airflow. So I really do like this case. Power supply, only need about 600 watts for this build. So that's what I grabbed this. It's a C tier rated PSU. I was trying to get something in B tier rating. I just couldn't do it though under your budget build. Remember, this is a relatively inexpensive music production PC and we're getting a lot of performance out of it. But I do like the Apiva Prestige 600 watts, uh, 80 plus gold. It's C tier rated under the speculative ones, but still, this is one of the PSUs that I would grab for $52. So for $903, we got you an insanely performative music production and gaming PC. Just go borrow that $3.81 out there. Not only did we massively increase your GPU performance for gaming, and if you want to get into video editing and those kind of tasks as well, we also upped the amount of DRAM that he has on his drive from zero basically to a lot. We added some additional enhancements on your motherboard in terms of the audio encoding and decoding. Again, for that music production out there, if he needs it, and we like everything else in the CPU to your budget. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. All right, we've got It's Danny Boy, I love it. Jason Papa, I need your magic. Hey, Papa was what I called my grandfather. He was Italian. I'm from Canada and I'm on a 1060 at the moment. Oh no, GTX 1060 and I need a serious upgrade. I want to stream and play competitive shooters at 1440p. You only play Warzone, that's it, really? And you'd be happy if you get 150 FPS in 1440p while streaming. Your budget's no more than 3,000 to 3,500 Canadian. That's like a lot of money, man. That's like $2,500 ish USD right now. I'll be forever grateful, much love Canada. All right, land of maple syrup and mooses, let's see what you got. Oh, lordy, 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 no, 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 no. Make it stop, what am I talking about? <laughs> You got bit hard by the Lee and Lee virus. The Lee and Lee virus came to poison your brain and it is killing your PC build. It's killing your PC build. Let's start off with the budget. You spent $3,437 Canadian, right under your $3,500 Canadian budget. And honestly, you do not have that level of performance here. You just don't have it. Let's start off with the GPU and then we're gonna jump into the real problem here. You got away with the Asus Tough Gaming OC RTX 4070 Ti. You're like, Jason, that's an expensive GPU, it's pretty, yeah, it is an expensive GPU if you don't consider the budget, but we have $2,500 USD or $3,500 Canadian here to spend. We should be getting a GPU that's way more powerful than this. We should be walking away with a 4080, 7900XX, especially you're playing Warzone, you should really only be looking at Radeon GPUs. And if all you play is that, then Radeon GPUs is where you want to be. And we should have a much bigger one than this. Let's talk about why we ended up with a smaller, 
cheaper GPU, and I'm not enthralled with the CPU choice, but at least it makes a little bit more sense. But the reason is we went with the Li and Li O11 Dynamic Evo ATX power case for $199. And people are like, Jason, what's wrong with this case? It's okay. It is the destroyer of PC builds. I've done so many boost my builds where this case right here has completely poisoned the build and completely destroyed their FPS because it's a huge money sink because it doesn't come with any included fans and you can put tons of fans in the sink and people feel like they gotta fill this thing up with fans. And the fans they get, they get the stupidly expensive Lee and Lee ones. Look at that, like $170 for a per three pack of Lee and Lee fans. Now it looks like there's $30 shipping. I don't know what the heck's going on there. I did look, these fans seem to be sold out everywhere else in Canada. So it's possible we could find some cheaper Lee and Lee fans in there, but they're still pretty expensive. And you've got three three packs. So you've got nine Lee and Lee RGB fans coming and they're like $170 a pack. You just, you're killing me. You're killing me here. That's like five or 600 Canadian on our PC case. We have completely undermined our build. We're not gonna do that. CPU, uh, look, I don't mind going Intel here, i7 13700K. I think the challenge we're gonna run into with Intel, especially as we opt the GPU power, is we're just gonna need such a big power supply that the costs are gonna go up really quickly. That's why, honestly, the Ryzen 7800X 3D, to me, makes a lot more sense here because we aren't gonna run into those high power draw situations. Also, uh, just looking here, it looks like we've massively undersized our PSU. The estimated watch is 729 watts. Now, if you do times 1.5, which is typically what I've done in the past, in order to size the PSU, you'd come up with a bill over, well over a thousand watts, but you went with an 850 watt. That's a good unit. Corsair RM850E, although I will say I had a little bit of a fan problem my 750E that's sitting next to me. It's making a bunch of noise. I'm gonna RMA it. Just one will put that out there. I actually bought another one to test to make sure it's not a problem in this overall lineup. But if it is, I'm gonna do a video on it. But otherwise, this is generally a good unit. A tier rated on the PSU cultist list. I do like it, but you gotta get more than 850 watts. But the cooler, again, here we go with all the things that this CPU requires, the 13700K, that's a problem with it. Even though it's cost competitive in Canada with like the 7800X3D, it's all the additional stuff you gotta get with it. So you got the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, 360, good, cooler, $189 Canadian, Canadian, remember, probably would look at something a little cheaper that's a 360 that also has good performance, but this is this is among the best. The motherboard, uh, Asus Tough Gaming Z790 Plus, this is fine. Just know that for 14th gen, this would not work. Does not have BIOS flashback. I don't know why Asus, who developed BIOS flashback, by the way, didn't include BIOS flashback on almost any of their Z690 boards except the ROG Strix and higher boards and made the same mistake with the Z790. Although I think a lot of board manufacturers were blindsided. They thought we'd be in Meteor Lake for 14th gen. That didn't happen. So just know if you're looking for a 14th gen motherboard, I would not go with this one unless you can guarantee the BIOS has been flashed for it. I like the RAM Trident Z, Z5 RGB. It's DDR5 7200CL34 RAM. Now you don't have to go this speed, but if you want to try and compete with the 7800X 3D, this is a speed you're going to need to go to. And I do like them that we got a Z790 board because they tend to be a lot better on their memory tracers and that helps improve our memory compatibility. Why in goodness name with a build of this cost size are we going with a hard drive? No, 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 no. No hard drive for you. No hard drive for you. Not for a gaming build. If you're like Jason, I want 20 terabytes of storage in a NAS or something. Sure. Okay. That's fine. This is not a, an applicable use case for a hard drive. Get an SSD like everybody else out there. And honestly, for this price, you can almost grab one for two terabytes. And and again, then we went ahead and we overspent on our SSD, the Samsung 980 Pro 2 terabyte, very expensive SSD. We don't need this level of speed. There's other drives out there that would do just fine and we could get rid of that stupid hard drive. So overall for $3,437, I just, I'm not seeing the value here. And that PC case, that Lee and Lee 011 Dynamic, which I have named the destroyer of gaming PCs, has absolutely punched a huge hole in our budget because we filled it out with all these crazy amounts of fans and I'm just not seeing the level of performance. This is not a $3,500 Canadian build. I call this the $3,300 Canadian or $2,400 USD ultra high-end 4K and 1440p gaming PC. Because honestly, once you see the FPS numbers I'm about to put in front of you, you're gonna be wondering why you're not going 4K. That's how much performance we're gonna get out of this thing. Let's go down to the budget. I finished it 
$3,286 Canadian, $3,286 Canadian. So you've got money left over in your budget. You've got $214 Canadian dollars left to upgrade or premiumize any of the components that I'm about to show you right now. That's huge, that is huge. And we're gonna get way more performance. Normally I go to the GPU at this point. I'm not going to the GPU just yet. Let's talk about that PC case. Huge point of contention for me. I really kind of did some research, crunched some numbers. I think spending $286 on the NZXT H9 Elite, this comes with three ARGB fans, comes with one black rear fan, it's got that nice atrium case look that you're looking for. We're gonna top mount a 360 millimeter AIO RGB cooler. Uh, spoiler alert, it's gonna come out to be way cheaper than just stupidly investing like good money after bad into that O11 case. And look, it's gonna give you the same kind of look and feel to it. I think you're gonna be super duper happy with this. And it only costs $286 Canadian. I know that's still a lot of money, but it only costs $286 Canadian, not like $650 or $700 Canadian. Let's jump into the GPU now. I went with the Sapphire Pulse, Radeon RX 7900 XTX. Forget that 4070 Ti, toss that thing away. You said, hey, I only really play Warzone. Warzone is built on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. $1,299 right now. Now listen, here's another area. If you wanna go with the Nitro, I've left you some money in the budget. You could decide to up that and go with the Nitro instead. Be a nice little upgrade in terms of the overall GPU, but I'm gonna go with this one. It's got a great level of performance. And let's talk about that performance. I dug up the TechSpot 7900 XTX review. Now note, they have improved the performance of the 7900 XTX since this review. This was December of 2022. Remember, they didn't quite hit their performance targets, but then they significantly increased the performance since that time with driver updates. But even before that, look at that. It's crushing, crushing the RTX 4090 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. My goodness. 4090, 243 FPS, the 7900 XTX at 311, it's like almost 100 more FPS. This is using the basic quality settings at 1440p. So these are like competitive level settings. These are not like ultra details, but this is what a competitive player would typically play at. Even if you turn on 4K, it still beats the 4090. It still beats the 4090, a GPU that typically costs what? $800 more USD than it does, almost twice as much. Totally insane value if you're a Modern Warfare 2 player or you're a Warzone 2 player. For the rest of the build, we swapped over to the Ryzen 7800X 3D. I just think those Intel 14700K builds, 14900K, they just get stupid amounts of power, even 13700K out there, stupid amounts of power, and we were just running into some power supply issues, so I decided to swap the whole platform over rather than kind of futz around with it because we were spending a lot of money on extra cooling and all these other things. $528 right now. Now, I note that it's not as cheap as it is once you do the currency conversion as it is in the US, but Black Friday, I do expect the CPU probably go on sale. So maybe you don't buy it now, maybe you wait. But even now, I would go ahead and snap this thing up for this build. For the cooler, we went ahead and stuck it out with the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360, but I got you the ARGB version for 10 bucks more. It's gonna look amazing at the top of that build. We didn't add any fans in there because these fans are going right there and they're gonna look amazing. And this thing is gonna perform really, really well. You actually do not need a 360 for the 7800X3D. I just bought it because I thought it would look cool at the top of the case. This is an area if you wanted to go with a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, or if you wanna go ahead and go with like an air cooler, you could do that instead and save quite a chunk of money. But I think this is gonna look amazing and perform amazing. For the motherboard, I went with the ASUS Tough Gaming B650 plus Wi-Fi. You seem to like the Z790 Tough Wi-Fi. So I, I went ahead and basically got you the same level of board performance, except on the Ryzen side with the B650. This is a great board, upgraded audio on it. It's got a number of M.2 slots. It's got that tough gaming styling to it. I think this looks really, really nice. But again, here's another area. If you wanna go with an ASUS Strix board, if you're not like a, an ASUS kind of fanboy person and you wanna go with an ASUS Strix board, I've left you a little bit of money in the budget. You could certainly do that. For the RAM, we don't wanna go with that stupidly fast RAM for Ryzen 6000 CL30. It's basically a hard speed limit. Anything faster than that, we could absolutely lose some performance. So we wanna go 6000 CL30, although I will say the 7800X3D doesn't really care about RAM speed the way like the Ryzen 7700 or 7950X or any of those other non-X3D CPUs do. It's just got so much vCache. It's like, I don't care what the RAM speed is. But let's go with this great kit, uh, Trident Z5 Neo. So this has the Expo timings, although XMP timings work just as well, but it's a really nice RGB stuff. I've got a couple of kits of this. I really do like it. And it's got a good price at 159 Canadian. For the drive, I got you two of these Sabret Rocket 
Gen 4 SSDs with DRAM to it. I don't know why we would do a really overpriced SSD in the 980 Pro and then a hard drive. I got you two of these drives for kind of almost the same price, almost the same price. I spent a little bit more money, but you're gonna get four terabytes of SSD storage instead of two terabytes and then two terabytes of hard drive storage. For the power supply, we went ahead and got you a Fantex Amp 1000 watt. This is an A tier rated PSU, really like it. With the rebate and everything and, and the promo code, it comes down to about 180 Canadian, which is not a bad price whatsoever. It's got plenty of power uh, connections. It's completely modular. Absolutely love this unit, particularly for higher end components. And the good news is with our lower power draw Ryzen, this actually gets us done. Finally, I did throw in one 120 millimeter Arctic fan, match those three fans we've got. You can swap out that rear fan, that all black fan if you want, and throw this one there instead. $19 Canadian, pretty cheap. So for $3,286 Canadian, we stepped you up from that RTX 4070 Ti to a 7900 XTX, which is gonna destroy Warzone, destroy Warzone. You will never be able to play on a different GPU again after this. And not only that, we got the aesthetics that you're looking for in the NZXT H9, and we actually got you enough fans and kitted that thing out for less than insane amounts of money you were gonna spend. We completely dumped that hard drive and we got you all SSD storage and fast Gen 4 storage with DRAM on top of that. And we got you a way better, higher performance gaming CPU that's gonna use tons less power. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Remember, everything is linked down in the video description, both builds. And if you got value out of the video, give it a like. This makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Hey, speaking of cool content, did you check out our CPU market update? We go through all the CPUs to tell you what's the best price and performance right now. And we'll catch you on the next one.